This is a well-known passage of Scripture, isn't it? It's one of those sentences from the Bible that many of us immediately recognize. Now, some of us might have committed it to memory at some point in our early lives in a Sunday school class. Others among us might recognize it because we've heard dozens of sermons about these words. In terms of how familiar they are, the words of Jesus' Great Commission, as Matthew records them, are right up there with passages such as the 23rd Psalm and John 3.16. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I am with you always to the very end of the age. There's nothing new to say about these words today. In the same way that the disciples who first heard Jesus say these words were commanded to go and make disciples, so too are you and me as we read them again all these thousands of years later. Jesus said, go, back then. And Jesus still says, go, today. Our whole intention with this three-week mini-series of sermons has been to start the year off right. In planning it through, we sense a real need to center our hearts and minds on Jesus, to remind ourselves of who he is and of how we must relate to him. In the first sermon a couple of weeks back, Pastor Carey reminded us that Jesus is Lord and that in him all things are held together. She also reminded us that relating to Jesus is about approaching him with hearts that are willing and a posture that is open to following Christ's lead. We also sense the real need to state our own position as a church, to let you, our congregation, know exactly where we stand and what our starting point is in 2023. So last week, I preached a State of the Church sermon in which I was so grateful to be able to evidence and say plainly that the Gracefield family at Memorial is strong and healthy and we are well positioned to keep moving forward in 2023. Today is the last sermon in the series and it's all about this command to go and about how we at Memorial keep moving forward together in the year ahead. Now, a few weeks back, we gathered as many of our church leaders as we could in Maxwell Hall for a 2023 leadership kickoff event. It was an opportunity for them all to meet one another and for us collectively to set the right tone for the new year. That night, I shared with the gathered group how, at the end of each calendar year, I, like many other leaders, like to take a look back over the 12 months that have passed and evaluate them in terms of effectiveness, high points, low points, gaps, lessons learned. The natural progression from that thought process is then to look forward to the 12 months that are in front and to reflect on what priorities and emphases need to be concentrated on during that time. So having explained all that, I shared with our leaders that I had a strong sense that as we moved into 2023, we needed to prioritize two important aspects of our life together at Memorial. Those being our prayer life as a church family and also our connections with one another. That night, I asked our leaders to be people who would be in deep prayer for our local church in 2023, and also to be proactive in modeling the importance of our relationships with one another, of being connected to one another. Prayer and connection. You might be wondering what it was that prompted these thoughts for me. I mean, why would it be so important for us to lean in more to prayer and connection and the answer to that question is actually quite easy. In terms of prayer, quite simply, the local church functions best and thrives more when its people give themselves to and are united in prayer. If you were to research and read the stories of any of the great seasons of revival in church history, you would find out that they all started with people who were committed to and united in prayer. The Hebrides Islands are a collection of islands off the northwestern coast of Scotland. And between 1949 and 1954, there was a powerful movement of the Holy Spirit there. 
that all began with the prayers of two elderly homebound sisters. Christine and Peggy Smith were 82 and 84 years old at the time. One of them suffered with crippling arthritis and the other one was blind. They couldn't show up and be involved in their church life. They couldn't do a lot, but they could pray. One evening, as they were in prayer for their church, one of the sisters received a vision in which she could see young people filling the church. They were struck by this, and the next morning they summoned the minister to come and visit, telling him to get himself ready because revival is coming. The minister was a little taken aback by this, and he didn't really know how to handle it. What do you suggest I do? he asked. You should pray, man, they replied. And then they proposed a deal with the minister. If you will gather your elders and pray in the barn at the other end of the village at least two nights every week, we will do the same here from 10 at night until 3 in the morning. And so it started. There was no immediate impact Nothing really happened initially, and young people definitely were not showing up at the door of the church. Even so, Christine and Peggy Smith clung tightly to the vision that had started it all off. They kept praying in their house, and the elders of the church kept gathering to pray in the barn at the other end of the village. They kept this up for many weeks. And as they continued in prayer, Inviting to God, God to be at work within them and through them, well, they began to experience God's presence among them in a new and powerful way. They contacted an organization called the Faith Mission in Edinburgh and asked them to send a Gaelic speaking preacher. Duncan Campbell was sent there, and when he arrived, he found a church that was packed with inquisitive locals who did not want to miss out on whatever was going on. Campbell planned to stay in the Hebrides for only 10 days, but he ended up staying there for more than two years, preaching and praying all over the islands and seeing God's Spirit at work in powerful and tangible ways wherever he went. And it all started with a commitment to and unity in prayer. That sense of unity thrives when we are intentional about our connection to one another. One of the lessons that I have learned in the last several years is that much of the relational connectedness that many of us assumed existed in the local church did not actually exist, or at least did not exist to the extent that we assumed it did. When faced with the challenges of life in times of a pandemic or in the face of the strong forces of divisiveness in our world, it seemed rather easy for what appeared to be deep, strong connections to break and be lost. Our connection with one another matters, and it's part of what makes our life together thrive. The sport that I love and played most in life is rugby. And one part of our sport that is well known is the scrum, in which eight players bind together to push against eight players from the opposing team in order to win possession of the ball. As a player, I was one of those eight for the entirety of my playing days, which is to say, I learned a lot about scrummaging. And the most important lesson I was taught was this. The tighter and closer those eight eight players are bound together, the stronger they are. But when they are loosely bound to one another, they are weak and the opposing eight players can tear them apart and drive right through them like a hot knife through butter. The same applies to our connection to one another in the local church. And dare I say it, in our conference and in our denomination too. The closer and the tighter we are, the stronger we are and the better positioned we are to move forward. Prayer and connection. When the church leans into both of these, it finds an abundance of strength and power with which to thrive. So that same invitation that I made to our church leaders, I am now going to make to you, our whole congregation. Pray for your church this year. Pray that our connection with one another would be strong. 
Pray that our journeys of discipleship would be committed. Pray that we would be humble before God and one another. Pray that we would be open, eager and courageous to follow wherever Jesus leads us. Pray that we would continue to make a difference in the world through acts of service and generosity. Pray that we would be bold in communicating the good news of God's great and saving love. Pray for salvation to come through the ministries and the connections that exist here. Pray for the reviving, enlivening work of God's Spirit to happen freely in and through us. And also, deepen your connection with one another. That person that sits in front of you or beside you each week in church, why not invite them to share a meal with you? Get to know them. Ask them how they might pray for you. Join a connection group. Groups which, in which we encourage and strengthen one another in the faith. Join a prayer group. Group. We have several of them that are formed and are praying together week by week, lifting up the needs of our world, our community and our church Sign up for a class. Learn and reflect a little bit more on the power of the gospel. Friends, seek out the places and the opportunities to connect more deeply with one another and we will find strength and unity together. We started out by reading the great commission of Jesus to his disciples. Go, he said. He gave them a mission to take part in and he sent them to get on with it. We too are called and sent to take part in Jesus' mission. And in 2023, our focus is on deepening our prayer and connections with one another as part of that mission. So church, go. Go prayerfully. Go together. And watch what God will do in and through Memorial in 2023. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Of course, at the end of all of our digital sermons, we like to give you a couple of questions to reflect on. And this week, rather than reflecting on the whole of the sermon, I really want to focus in on those questions that were, I was raising at the end about, about prayer and connection. I want to ask you, who are you praying for? How are you praying for your church? And the same with connection. Who are you connected to in the church family here? How are you making those connections stronger together? Take some time to reflect on those questions this week. To help you with that, I have uh, created a Google Doc and there will be a link that comes up in the comments section of the screen here. And I invite you to go along um, to that Google Doc and just fill out your responses to the questions there. That'll really help us as we continue forward in this journey of prayer and connection in 2023. So friends, that brings us to the end of our digital service today. As always, I want to thank you for joining us in this way. We love that we get to worship together uh, digitally week by week. I want to invite you to join us again in this service next week. We will go out uh, on YouTube at 11 a.m. as we do every Sunday. The service will be available every day thereafter. You can come back and watch it again if you wish. Or if you're in person here in Fernandina Beach and you're able to come and join us and you would like to do that, we want to invite you to join us at any of our in-person worship services. We are going to worship here at 8 a.m. in the sanctuary, then 9.30 in Maxwell Hall, and then 11 a.m. back here in the sanctuary. Next Sunday is a first Sunday. We will celebrate Holy Communion at all of our services. 
And so friends, we hope that we gather together and build on these two focus areas of prayer and connection in 2023. It starts here and it starts with Jesus' command to go. So go receiving this benediction. Beloved children of God, go in peace today to pray up the work of your local church, to pray God's work in your local community. Go in peace today with a commitment to build connections that are strong and tight so that we might move forward together in Christ this year. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.